Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Horizon. Um, we've got a great number of sessions coming up, and we're going to start off with Lynette Kwamboka from Kenya. Thank you very much. Good, good afternoon, everyone. In these kinds of se uh, sessions, we normally say greetings from the government of Kenya and from the people of Kenya, so, but I will not get very bureaucratic. Um, I guess one of the questions that we've always been asking ourselves is, you know, what is Kenya doing? Who are these guys? And are we like everyone else or, you know, are we unique because we are um, African? Uh, as I was introduced, my name is Lynette Kwamboka and I am the project coordinator for the Kenya Open Data Initiative uh, for the government of Kenya. So today I'm going to take you into a little bit of the journey of uh, Kenya Open Data Initiative from the past four years to uh, where we are today. And it's been a very interesting journey really. Uh, this is when the Kenya Open Data Initiative was launched and we had uh, the former president, uh, Mwai Kibaki, launching it with uh, color and balloons and hope and pomp and everything. Um, and there has been a lot of change from when we started to today. There has been an increased number of um, data sets from when we started. There's been an increased number of people embedding and, you know, um, and having for, uh, the Socrat uh, platform has been great because we're able to track all these things. And one of the interesting questions is when people ask, how did Kenya do that? You know, whenever we say we've had over 52 million views on the platform, they're like, oh, no way. Um, that's Kenya, how? Um, there has been, I attribute these to two things, really. Um, and I say one is we have tried to change the narrative. You will realize that since morning, for all the presentations that you have seen, no one has quite talked about anti-corruption or accountability. It's been about development and, you know, transit systems and all great things that really cities should be doing with open data. But then when it comes to African countries, we like to talk about anti-corruption and accountability. And we realized that that is the one thing that was holding open data in African countries back. Because if I come to you as an individual and say, I think you're being corrupt, the first thing you say is, okay, give me time to go clean up my mess before I show you my data. But if I come to you and say, you know, if you give us your data for us to understand where the government is making investment, so we will help SMEs make, you know, better informed decisions, then you're more inclined to, you know, wanting to do that. The second thing is our focus. We have uh, planned and opened up a little more, and now we work more in partnership with, you know, academia, civil society, media, trying to bring in more people into the idea of open data and trying to create as much demand as we can as well uh, out, out of government. So our first year anniversary, it was great. Uh, we like to party mostly. Um, and we sent two people to Helsinki for uh, something they call the sauna bash or something. Um, we had a cake. Um, we used to be called the ICT board and we cut cake and we ate. And then came the second and third year. Uh, you know, everyone expected that we would be celebrating every single year. Uh, but this is the time we went back to the drawing board, really, to see what is Kenya Open Data and what are we trying to do. One of the interesting things is during this time, a lot of the news that was in the media is Kenya Open Data is dead. Kenya Open Data hitting a dead end. Everything was just dead, 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 dead. And I still meet people today who say, what happened to Kenya Open Data? You guys died off. And I say, Kenya Open Data really um, never died. Um, and of course, Mark Twain says there are all sorts of um, lies, right? Uh, lies, damn lies, and statistics. And a lot of what we tend to you know, rely on is the lies. But a lot of what I have today is statistics. <clears throat> You can see from when we launched to where we are today, there was never a time when the platform really had zero uh, you know, access. It's, it's always been consistent. And of course, you know, this year we made a little more noise and we said, hey guys, we, we're here and we've had you know, a lot more access. Uh, but then when you look at um, just this year alone, there's, there's been you know, great improvement. So when people are asking, um, what do you mean you've had millions of views? And I'd like to say the Kenya Open Data Initiative um, you know, is one of the most accessed portals or websites really in Kenya. And sometimes I like to say it's also because it's run by Lynette, so why not? Um, we've had 
an interesting story is when we started, a day before launch in 2011, exactly a day before launch, uh, the president, so His Excellency Mwai Kibaki, then um, refused to launch the portal because some ministers went to him and said, we are opening ourselves up to the West and, you know, they're going to know the operations of Kenya. What if they come and attack us? And he actually said no. Uh, so we have rented this very expensive, you know, um, venue and we have everything ready, all the invites, we're just ready to go. And he simply said, sorry, I cannot launch this thing. So there's a team of us who had to go there and actually convince him that open data is good for Kenya. And I wish he was still president now, then I would show him these statistics that when we are saying that, you know, it's the West that is accessing this data, it's really Kenya that accesses, you know, the open data uh, portal more. And then the United States, of course, and then there's the United King Kingdom, and you can see how everyone else breaks down. But then when you look at, stat you know, specific kinds of cities, uh, we have Nairobi, which is at the top, and then we have Thika. Thika is a very, it's not very small, it's a, you know, a neighboring um, kind of town to Nairobi, and then uh, we have London and uh, Washington. Where are you, folks? Number eight, wow not so bad. Um, but then it's been four years of open data, so what? Uh, we started off with, you know, a not so good looking logo. Now we have a better logo. Um, when we started in 2011, there was only two of us, so myself and one other colleague. Um, then last year we hired four more, three more people, so there's five of us. And then we have one thing that I think has been really the most um, incredible thing that happened to Kenya Open Data, which is we hired fellows. And what we did is we had eight people, put them in four different government institutions, and out of this, um, we tried to increase capacity. I mean, every time we point fingers at government and say government is not opening up, government is being all closed, we did a survey and we realized that the biggest problem really with government is they do not have the capacity. So we tried, we went in, gave them capacity. We have one of the institutions that has hired now three more people to help out with its open data, uh, you know, efforts. So there's five people working on open data. This is three months in. We have one other in institution that has changed its policies in terms of information systems and is now adopting what we're doing with open data. And we've had about three other institutions that we did not embed any fellow in coming in and saying in the next batch of fellows, can you please give those to us? So we're starting to see these kinds of changes. But again, over four years, you really have to learn something and start implementing that kind of change. We also have two consulting you know, houses. One, of course, is Socrata that pl uh, provides the platform that we have. And then we also have another one called Rolles, who are responsible for you know, managing the fellows, but also doing a lot of the awareness and um, events and activities. Um, as I said, our Kenya Open Data Initiative was launched by His Excellency you know, uh, Mwai Kibaki, who's the former president. And just this year, we had you know, the current president also, you know, looking through the Kenya Open Data Initiative. So, and wh wh when I put this out, someone said, and who knows how many other presidents have actually, you know, uh, seen the Kenya Open Data Portal. So for us, that's, you know, a big success. Um, I'm very sentimental about the first picture because um, having a software engineering background, I kind of designed that and so Kratia put it all together. Uh, and then this year they came up with this newer, more modern looking, uh, you know, portal, which has given us a lot more attraction and a lot more attention. So I'm happy that we changed. And you know, the first tweet that came out of this said, uh, can you open data, congrats for the new look and feel for open data to geo ke Landing page is more user friendly, plus the budget app, Kenya. Uh, so this, uh, this is great. And then, so before this, this thing called the Official Secrets Act, which means that government people, whenever you ask for information, would tell you, sorry, it's government secret. But then we've been working on you know, legislation, so we have the Access to Information Bill and the Data Protection Bill that have gone through you know, um, their first uh, reading in parliament, which means we are very optimistic that hopefully before end of year, we will have laws that actually legislate the idea of opening up information and citizens having information, but also making sure that uh, very critical information that should not be out in the public is protected. 
Um, some of our achievements, of course, we've had a lot of uh, data literacy. We've had a lot of standardization in terms of data collection and dissemination. Uh, we've created a lot of partnerships. Uh, there's a lot of dig digitization efforts happening within governments now, which is great. Uh, there's a lot of startups and businesses that have been started around, you know, the whole movement of open data. Uh, then there is, oh, is that an uh, indication that I should stop? <laughs> Almost there. Uh, and then there's initiatives and movements, and then we, of course, have uh, legislation. Almost there. Um, and then um, this one of the biggest celebrations I think we've had this year is um, one of the things I like about cable TV is I get to watch Bloomberg every morning. Um, and out of this, uh, everyone loves Bloomberg because of statistics and all. And this year, uh, Bloomberg partnered with the Open, da uh, Open Data Institute in the UK, and they decided to award you know, companies and individuals and institutions out there that are doing great work around um, open data. And you know, the Kenya Open Data Initiative came top three um, you know, in, the, in, in, in the recognition. So we were very, very proud about that. But then um, they also decided that I've kind of done some awesome work over the past four years, so they also recognized me, so I, I guess I'm doing something. Um, and I like to say that we are not there yet. We are almost there. Um, someone said uh, Kenya has heavily invested in an online open data portal, but 77% of the rural population still prefer radio. Oh, well, I don't know if this is good news for Socrates, so we might uh, decide to go right away. But um, for us, this is just to say that there are people out there who've looked at the situation and are trying to help, trying to give us solutions and saying, how can we work better in partnerships and with other people to actually ensure that every single citizen really has access to open data? Thank you.